hey, don't skip. Now, I don't want to waste anyone's time. So if you're looking for one of those what we know about this thing so far videos, this is not it. In this one, I'm simply answering questions made by the community. So if you want one of those what we know so far videos, go and watch Patrick's video about it, the garage band guide. It's only a few minutes long and it's really good. Link in the pinned comment down below. Hello there, my lovely audience, and welcome to Hack Attack. Yesterday was the 9th of May, 2023, and Apple announced something huge. They're putting logic on iOS. Now, it's not an iOS universal app. It won't be available for iPhone. It will be available for iPad. And you're gonna need some upgraded hardware because it requires at least a Bionic 12 processor. And that's not the only thing you're gonna have to get comfortable with. You also need to get comfortable with subscriptions. And for new users or new subscribers, it's gonna be free for a month. And then after that, you can choose either to pay a yearly subscription of $49, or you could choose to pay $5 month by month. So I'll just start by answering the question, will I be switching out what I'm already using and start using Logic instead? And the answer is no, I am a Cubase guy. And I have been a Cubase guy for decades. The first time I saw Cubase was on an Atari ST. So I've always been a Cubase guy and I'm not switching over to another DAW or platform anytime soon. And it's not that Logic isn't capable of doing what I want. It is. I know it is because I've come across it so many times throughout my journey through music production. Because here in Sweden, MacBooks and Logic is a common thing you see. And whenever that happens, whenever I end up in the studio with that type of equipment, that platform, someone else has to run the controls because I don't feel at home. It's like sleeping over at a friend's place, waking up, realizing that you're somewhere weird and you don't recognize yourself. I mean, I don't know. I don't know why I'm even trying to over explain this. It is okay for people not to like the things that you like. I don't understand why people get so upset and angry over this. I'm sorry, I've had some really uh, annoying, stupid conversations with some people who just don't want to accept the fact that it is okay to like something and it is okay to not like something without attacking each other over it. Either way, with that said, I am actually happy that this happened for two reasons. Number one, everyone who wanted Logic, you got your big win, you're finally getting it. And I'm happy to see so many happy people getting exactly what they need, what they want. The second reason I'm happy is something that Henny brought up during his live stream the day before I made this video. I do think that more DAWs are gonna take a look. Specifically, if you start to see some success coming from these iPads and then it becomes articles you know it becomes the news and so once you start to see that you're gonna be like okay all right i might need to start really taking a look at making daws for ipad os or just for this this architecture and i totally agree with henny here in fact it was the first thing that popped in my head when i saw the announcement maybe this will signal to the rest of the industry making desktop DAWs, laptop DAWs, that it is possible to put your big DAWs over on iOS. And that might lead to be actually, you know, being able to use Steinberg's Cubase, the flagship app on iOS. And that's not the only thing that could follow from this. Just imagine all those plugins available on desktop and laptop systems right now. And what could possibly happen from this now that there is more incentive to actually port them over since logic is getting on to ios and if that happens there's going to be a change in pricing structure for the platform i don't think we should expect it to stay the same prices will increase we'll see more subscriptions and yeah so now we get into that topic Number one, I've been against subscription for a very long time. I don't like microtransactions at all. No, oh, God! Don't do it to me. I beg you. No, God, no. please, no! Nothing. No! You have nothing no. to do with this decision. <laughs> However, I've come to change my mind over the years because of several factors. So first, let me tell you what type of subscription model I do get down with. The Loopy Pro model. 
And I know I've said in the past that it's not a subscription model, but it is. It is a subscription model for upgrades. Basically, it works like a magazine subscription. And that's why I can get down with it, because I've had those before. I've subscribed to science magazines, music magazines, all kinds of different magazines. And what happens is you pay a year, you get a magazine a month sent home to you. And when you opt out of the next year's subscription, no one comes to your home and takes your magazines away from you. FBI, open up! Where are the magazines? Give back magazine. Give them back. Where are they hiding? Give it back now. You can still go back and look through those magazines. They're yours, right? And that's the type of model I like. And that's how Loopy does it. They let you pay for an app, base app, and then you can opt in for another year of upgrades. And if you don't, you don't lose access to the app you already paid for, you still have it, you can still use it, and you still get updates that keeps the app functioning. So I think that's the most fair model, both for the developer working on the app, getting continuous support from the community that wants to use the app and wants it to improve, and also for the user who gets to keep whatever they've paid for already, if they decide to opt out of something. So yeah, that's the model I can get down with. Now, being a billion dollar company, however, does Apple really need those $5 a month from you in order to keep this thing going? I think not. Apple could probably give away Logic both on desktop and on iOS without losing their company, but that's not what we're discussing here. $5 a month, is that a lot? I don't think so. Not for your dream music making platform. A lot of people will pay that. Now, $49 a year, I don't think that's much either. I think that's fair. However, I would much rather see a pricing structure where the consumer actually gets to keep their investment, like the Loopy Pro model, pay a base price, opt in for upgrades. I think a lot of people would actually just get that because I think it's more fair to the consumer. We're in a digital age where we pay microtransactions for everything, but we don't really own anything. And yeah, I know you don't own any of the software. You don't, you don't own the code. You own a license to use the code. But yeah, I have a hard time paying for something where it feels like my money is disappearing, even if it's not, because I'm, I'm still getting something for it. The value I'm getting out of it is, for instance, if I use Netflix, well, it is the convenience of having an abundance of movies at my fingertip, which I can watch at any time with any device, and I don't have to see ads in the middle of things. It's really nice. I'm actually just paying for the convenience of those two things. However, it does still feel sour at the end because sometimes a favorite movie or a favorite show disappears from that streaming service. So what's happened over the years is I've started actually buying my most favorite movies and shows on Blu-ray and DVD because I want to build my own library. I want to be able to go back and pick up a thing and watch it at any time. Okay, hold on, let's just jump back to that screen again. Just read that screen, because what I'm about to say next, I'm mostly thinking of indie devs here, app pricing and indie devs. I'm not so much thinking and considering Apple's economics here and also bigger tech companies, because they can actually offset the money that they're losing on app development with money they're making from other products in their lineup. Maybe hardware, maybe software for desktop and laptop. Hold on, losing money you say? Yes, some people I've talked to in the tech industry has hinted at that, that they're actually not making enough money for what they're putting into development. So they've got a few people sitting down writing code or maybe just one person and they cost so much and they're making less than they actually pay for it. And in those cases, you might ask, why would they do that? Well, it's easy, brand recognition. That's a currency too. People keep seeing your brand's name everywhere. It's marketing. And not only that, you get bragging rights. I mean, you're developing apps for a platform with a different technology structure. Actually, I'm just guessing here. I don't know how much bragging rights really is worth for a company. I, uh, might be worth nothing. I don't know. Either way, the bigger companies can sometimes afford 
losing money on one thing because they're making enough or more than enough somewhere else. But indie devs, well, that's a completely different story, which is why I want to direct this entire section towards them. But I am, of course, acknowledging the fact that, of course, the other companies need to make money too. It would be nice if they could offset the money they put into development with actual earnings of the resulting products, right? All right, so I had to say all of that to preface the next part because I'm about to say something that a lot of people don't want to hear and a lot of people have been warning me to say it because they don't want me to give companies ideas and they don't want to see greed just ruin the mobile music app game. And nor do I. I've already watched the gaming industry. I mean, gaming is something I've been doing my whole life. I'm a huge gamer. And I've watched the gaming market get ruined by greed, microtransactions, gambling, shitty business practices, shitty behavior against devs making games for huge companies and shitty customer support. But with all of that said, I still need to say the next thing. I still need to say it because it is a real thing. And if we want the platform to mature, which is a term other people are using, not me personally, because I've been working with this platform for 10 years and I've been able to do whatever I want. But for some, it still needs to mature. And for that to happen, I think that the pricing needs to change too. Like, seriously. And I'm going to say something now that's going to make so many people clinch up their buttholes and they're going to want to strangle me on the street. And if that happens, if you see me on the street, don't strangle me. Just stay calm. You're not in control. I have always considered the pricing structure for music apps to be unreasonably low. And that is a, a real factor in all of this. What is the incentive for a developer to stay and stick around and keep updating their apps, making new apps, if they cannot sustain themselves in the end? I see comments by people being angry at this or that app no longer receiving updates or being angry over new versions of the same app, even though it really isn't the same app. And you got to ask yourself, why? Why is it that some developers just pick up and leave? How come that I find out f several months after a new developer put out an app, I hear that they've got a new job and they're no longer doing app development? Well, when I ask these people, they tell me the same thing. I, I couldn't make it on the App Store. I just wasn't making enough. I wasn't selling enough. And if we can put our anger aside, we can probably all understand and agree with someone choosing another line of work to make themselves financially stable, because that's something we're all trying to do. But yeah, it does suck to buy something and it breaking on us and then finding out that no one's gonna fix it. That sucks a lot. But that's the state of this platform and it needs to change. Something needs to give, something needs to happen. Prices might have to be raised, especially if we want desktop developers to get into the iOS game. Some developers making some larger apps that take them years and years to work on might have to implement subscription models. And in that case, I hope they go for the magazine subscription model, the Loopy Pro model, the desktop model. Now, there is one thing, though, that I think we can all agree on, and that is we probably do not want all apps to turn into subscription apps because look at that number. Those are just the AUV3s on my iPad, and it's not counting the interapp audio apps also. Uh, that would be a lot of subscriptions, and it wouldn't be a reasonable, viable way of doing this. So with all of that said, hopefully I didn't lose too many subscribers over that. Now I'm interested in hearing what you have to say. I know that there's a lot of good arguments for and against certain things. I want to hear about what you think about Logic. Are you going to be using Logic when it comes out? Are you going to be switching over? Um, do you have a pro problem with subscriptions? Uh, do you have any solutions for these developers that are, have a hard time making it? I don't know. Talk it out down there in the comment section. I will be reading every comment thoroughly. And if you're still here watching this, thank you so much. And if you want to support the work I do here on the channel, give me a thumbs up. And if you don't, give me a thumbs up. And as usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. You know, I didn't even touch upon the... Uh, touch aspect of things because you know i actually got into this platform because of touch and now it's being marketed like this and everybody wants desktop software and ah, something's getting lost in that you know i'm i'm not so sure how i feel about that to be honest